Okay, so go ahead and grab um, a pair of diodes and we're just going to free up one of them and this is where a little bamboo skewer comes in handy. Now there's actually no spot that's designated for a diode but a resistor pad is just fine. So just size it up roughly where you think it needs to be bent and use this is what your skewer is for and use it to bend your leads to roughly what you think the right length will be and just come back and check after you've got one bent now we're not going to talk about specifics of each component diodes for example have to be oriented to the band side and um, and specifics like distance off the board um, in most cases you just bring your your component down to the board like this but in some cases you're going to want to actually space it off and a little set of thin um, wooden shims are really great for that for example I like my diodes to sit a little bit off the board so I'm going to do it this way in the kit build we we will talk about specifics like that you don't have to space off a diode but it's just something I like to do um, now a little bit of flux so a toothpick applicator is really good you don't want a lot of flux excess flux is going to mean a lot of work to clean the board later on so just get a little a little tiny dab will do don't forget the solder already has some flux in the core. So set your uh, temperature controlled soldering iron to about 360 C, which is about 680 Fahrenheit. Make sure your tip is tinned and clean. And let's get you really in focus here. Now a little dab of solder on the tip is going to help it get going and getting a nice bit of lead so your fingers aren't on top of the iron is good. Now press fairly firmly and as soon as the starter, solder starts to flow fill it in and hold for a second and off. Now you don't want to touch the joint for a second or so while it cools or you'll disturb the solder work that you did. Now let's do that again. We've got a little dab of solder on here already and pressing down is something I think beginners don't get. You can't be gentle. You actually have to put a little bit of force onto the pad so you have good heat transfer. Now notice how I'm actually on the edge of my tip and I'm filling now. I'm going to hold for a second and then I'm going to release. You don't want to stay on too long or you'll damage the component. Now you're going to constantly be cleaning your tip off. Sorry I'm probably bouncing the camera because this whole bench is moving every time I do that. So I, I give that a quick clean. I'm going to put my iron back into its holder. Now if the solder is not flowing that well at your temperature, if you're all the iron, every iron ever made is not going to have an identical temperature control. So it'll be off a little bit. Or, you know, your methodology will be slightly different. Your solder will be slightly different, your tip. So if the solder is not flowing that well, bring your temperature up a little bit, just a little bit. So you might go from uh, 360C up to 375 C for example which is 700 Fahrenheit and try that. Now if the solder is flowing way too fast and it's literally not sticking it's just it's just disappearing you're too hot so turn your soldering iron down a little bit and then try that. Eventually you'll know your temperatures for your own bench and you won't during the kit builds I call out the temperatures for for every job that we do so that you can get your iron set for let's say a close temperature and then you'll have to trim it. So let's have a really good look at what we've done here. 
Let's get it focused. So you should end up with basically a flattened volcano. And then you're perfect. Let's look over at the other side. Now these are double-sided boards. So if you did a really great job soldering, it'll actually flow through a little tiny bit. You don't want too much, but it'll throw, flow through a little bit and it'll basically be soldered so that the pads are double-sided and there's a, a pad actually through the hole. <laughs> In the old days, boards were one, when I was a young lad, <laughs> I can see Charles is editing this video and he, I can see him rolling his eyes. Um, we only had one-sided boards and they were not as nice as these. Um, so, and components, of course, have improved a lot since then as well. So we're really blessed to live in this time. And you can see I actually soldered my components slightly off the board. And what that does is it gives us good airflow around the component. If there's not a lot of heat going to be on a component, it doesn't matter. You would put it tight to the board. Most small resistors will go tight to the board. And in fact, we're going to do a resistor next. Now, don't leave leads lying around uh, that can prick you, pork you. So just get them off safely and get them into a garbage can. Um, you should be wearing eye protection when you're doing this. I'm lucky that I have... Um, uh, big big lens glasses so I don't have to put on extra eye protection. Just be really careful. The leads can come flying off if you don't hang on to them. You can step on them. Um, Charles is always stepping on my leads and let's get going. So now the general rule when soldering is to start with the smaller components and work your way up to bigger components. So let's let's get a resistor on. Let's put R2 in over here and let's be quick about it now that we know what we're doing. We're going to put this right down onto the board. So put your finger on it, turn it over, bend your leads back a little bit. They don't have to be hard down. In fact, you don't want to do this. You want it perhaps at about 45 degrees. That's enough to hold it and keep the lead um, up so you can snip it. Just a little tiny drop of flux. Remember, a dab is all you need. So don't use a Q-tip or something like that that'll put a huge blob. And we're gonna talk about flux cleaning in a minute. So I'm gonna hold the temperature at 360C, uh, 680 Fahrenheit, because it worked really well over here and the pads and components are roughly the same size. Now, take a look at how I solder with a chisel tip. So let's clean that tip and tin it. Always keep it tinned or you're not going to get good heat transfer. So time and temperature, that's what we're basically showing you here. So because this is a fairly small component, I'm actually just working on the tip of the chisel. That's it. So watch this. I'm coming in like this. I'm heating it up. There's a little sizzle because I had just cleaned the board and it wasn't 100% dry. And I'm over here on the other side. As soon as the solder starts to flow, you fill. Now it's important to hold for a second and that'll give you much better uh, flow out. Now take a look at this. So this one I did a really good job on and we got a flattened volcano. Here I've got a blob. That's not a good solder joint, is it? No, it's not. You saw that right away. And that's because I didn't follow my methodology. And so how do you rework a joint that's not well wetted out? Well, you just come in like you were soldering it fresh. So a little dab of solder on the tip. I'm going to come in on the bigger part of the chisel to really heat it up. And I'm going to hold it in there for just a second. I'm going to put a drop of solder and I'm going to let it flow out. When you're doing solder work, it's important to get it right. Now there's a little extra solder in there, but it flowed much, much better. Let's get that cleaned up. You don't need a lot of solder when you're doing solder work, but you need enough. 
Now, let's take a look at the other side of the board. Now, on a double-sided board, this soldered in correctly, these pads, is all you need to do. But, if you want to do a, you know, a NASA grade or an aerospace grade solder, you're going to actually come back and you're going to finish up the other side. So, it's exactly the same way you would do the other side, the main side that you're soldering. You don't need to add extra flux. There's probably a little flux that flowed through. So just bring your heat in, hold it on there, and, and just fill in a little. You don't want a lot on the other side of the board. And as I mentioned, this is not absolutely critical. Let's see what we've done here. Let's put the iron in its holder where it's safe. So you can see now we've soldered both sides of the component and that's really a first class soldering job. Okay, how about um, something a little bit trickier? So how about a bigger resistor? The bigger the component, the more heat you need to do a good soldering job. So it just so happens that we've got, on this board, we've got a nice big pad for a larger resistor. Let's just size it up, bend our leads. You'll feel right away the leads of the bigger resistor are heavier. So they're going to basically um, absorb more of the heat from your tip. So you're going to need more heat in your soldering iron or you're going to need more time. And that's what you're trying to balance out. So let's put a little dab of flux. Let's turn our soldering iron up a little, just a little tiny bit. We're going to go from 360C to 370C. This is why it's, which is about 690 Fahrenheit. This is why it's so important to have a temperature controlled soldering iron. Years ago we had one temperature <laughs> and how you regulated a single temperature iron is contact time. So you would actually be on, off, on, off, depending on uh, your flow rate. And you can get very good at that, but it's, you know, it's not as precise and it's really difficult for beginners to get the hang of it. So we're a little hotter. I'm going to put a little dab of solder on my tip and I'm pressing. I'm holding for a little longer to let it warm up and now I'm going to fill. I'm going to hold for a second and I'm going to let go. You can do the other one while you're watching. Same thing. I often put a little dab right at the beginning and then that'll really help it start flowing and then you fill. Hold for a second, that'll help it flow out and clean the tip. It'll be second nature before you, you realize it. Let's have a good look at what we've done. You see we've got a nice flattened volcano. That's a really nicely wetted out solder joint or flowed out. And you can see here we flowed right through and filled in both sides. I would call that perfect. Now, when you're soldering, you're always aiming for perfect. Don't get flustered or don't, don't really get frustrated if you get a 90% or an 80% job. The electricity really doesn't care so long as it has a decent amount of contact. So don't be fussed by that. If you really think you need to, come back and do a little rework as I showed you. All you have to do is reheat and reflow. Sometimes you want to bring the temperature up or down a little bit. And Bob's your uncle. Sometimes it helps to add a little dab more of flux into the mix. Okay. So what about um, something a little bit more challenging? So we've got a bunch of these uh, blue junctions in the kit and they actually have to be prepped 
sometimes components need to be readied before you put them on the board. So always pay attention to what you're installing. So in this case, just back the screws out until they're up near the top. All blue junctions are manufactured with them closed, basically. I wish they wouldn't do it that way, <laughs> but it's probably, they probably do it for a good reason. So we have to make sure that the receiver here, where the wire goes, is open. So an all is really great for that. So just open it up and make sure the wire will slide in there. And let's see if I've got a little clamp on my bench. So these little alligator clips are fabulous for putting junctions on. Let's see if we have a place for it. Here's the spot right here. And I just use these little clips to just hold the junction in place. It's a bigger part and the the um, the leads are even heavier and there's metal up in here that will absorb heat. So you're going to need even more temperature. You see where this is going, right? I think you already were ahead of me. And you're going to need a tiny bit more flux because it is a little bigger component. So let's bring our temperature up to 380 C, which is about 710 Fahrenheit. Let's get our solder set up. It only, with a temperature, a good temperature controlled soldering iron, it doesn't take long for them to come up to temperature. We're going to press a little firmer because this is um, a little heavier component. And it's melting, so I'm filling. I'm filling a little bit more because it's a little bigger, and I'm holding a slight bit longer. That's on. As soon as that is dry, we can unclip. Doesn't take long, folks. Let's make sure the iron is clean. Now, look how I'm actually making contact with the pad and the pin. The flux melts right away. I put a dab of solder to get it flowing. I wait a second and now I fill. I hold for a second longer than usual because it's a big component. I clean my tip. Put it away safe. Let's have a look. There you go. Bob's your uncle. That's not really long enough to be bothered with trimming, so I would leave that just the way it is.